This is Artifacts of Mars, and we're going to discuss uh, various meso methods of seed dispersal and why evolution can't explain this. Um, I'm going to start with plants that use animals to disperse their seeds, and then we'll uh, go we also do wind and um, fruit bearing plants because all of them show behaviors that had to have been planned. Now this site that you're seeing right here edible ediblewildfood.com it's a weed eating site. Burdock is edible uh, it's very plentiful. Um, here's the point. What do plants like burdock do? There's a lot of them out there. You ever gone through a field or, you know, woods, you wind up with these things stuck on your uh, clothes, right? Well, see, these plants have these uh, stick em things and what they do what the intention there for the plant is for these uh, things to stick to an animal's fur and then the animal unwittingly helps spread the plant because the animal wanders around and eventually the bird falls off and gets shed off or whatever and then, boom, you have new weeds in new places. Very elegant, but how would a plant know uh, that there is such a thing as furry animals and grow these things? Now, if you look at these burrs, they actually come in a variety, a wide variety of uh, shapes and sizes. They all have one thing in common, the uh, stick to an animal's fur. Now how did this arise when these plants don't even know that there are such things as animals? Unless somebody programmed it into them. This is the whole point right here. Uh, there are other plants that use animals to help disperse their seeds, and we will get to that. I'm talking about the ones that uh, produce these sticking things. Now I'm going to bring up a new tab because what I was going to do is show you a different type of plant that, to some extent, uh, does actually uh, use animals to help disperse its seeds. Only this one has a different type of mechan mechanism. Uh, touch me not. Instead of developing these uh, burrs that cling on an animal's fur, what touch me not will do is it explodes. You touch it. They have these seed pods, when an animal goes by and touches it, the seed pods explode. And they help drive the uh, seeds a little ways away from the plant. Hopefully that's the mechanism. How did this happen? The plant has no way of telling that there are such things as animals. Unless there's an intelligence behind it. There has to be something that encoded this stuff into the plant's genes. In the case of the burrs, and in, and in the case of the touch me knots, it would just be too complex. You'd have to have gene after gene after gene after gene designing these things and getting them so they'll stick on the fur or 
these uh, seed pods would explode. And we're expected to believe that this is all random. Well, if it's all random, you would wind up with something that just won't work. But obviously, these are not random. As, like I've said before, you can call it God, you can call it aliens, I don't really care. The point here is, these plants that develop this means of seed dispersal that's dependent largely on animals, not so much with touch me knots, because touch me knots, those would burst anyway, eventually, I would think. But these are, you know, common strategies that so many of these plants employ. And how in the hell do these evolutionists expect you to believe that this is just all series of accidents that led to you see dispersal um, methods. There's no way. There is no way, people. Seed dispersal is not an accident. Somebody or something Call it aliens, call it gods, I don't know. Program this stuff into the genes of the plant so they would know how to do this. Wait till we get to the uh, aerial ones. That one's really amazing that they can tell us that these are all accidents. These are not all accidents. These were created to do this. As for who, that's up to you to decide. But when you have Richard Dawkins sitting there saying, this is all an accident, just tell them to stuff it when the moon don't shine. No matter of fact, it's Mars. <laughs>